have a 3D printer, you like using earth boxes, I'll show you a cheaper alternative today. Cucumbers and bell peppers. Over here we have jalapenos, romaine lettuce, onions, sweet peas, and tomatoes. As much as I like the earth boxes, $50 a pop at some point, I have to stop buying. So I have a 3D printer, and there's been several projects online where people have kind of made their own, and they're typically called an earth bucket instead of an earth box. So what I ended up doing was my, making my rendition of it. It consists of a platform. This is the water wicking tube. It's key to fit down in here. If you decide that you want the pickup holes on one side rather than the other, you can put it in here and you don't have to worry about it moving around. These are the standoffs that hold this up out of the water. This is a drill guide to put the drain hole in the side. The reason we want it in the side rather than the bottom is we always want some water in here. That way the dirt that goes down in the tube uh, limits how much water will be wicked up and spread into the rest of the soil. That way the uh, plants don't drown. So this guide that I have is made for a 3 inch, 3 8 inch bit. The sides of the bucket are actually curved up towards the edge. So if you put this all the way against the edge, it'll actually come up. So hold it back a little bit. I'm just going to put a couple in. There's one there and one there. Okay, so the spacers go in. The platform goes in. And what I want is the fill tube closest to the drain. And the reason being is as I add water, I want it to go directly out the overflow rather than across and push dirt out around the uh, wicking tube. So I want the dirt to be the furthest away from the drain and the water inlet. So it's actually sized to just press down. The wicking tube, you can see my printer had some issues. Uh, I just picked a random size hole. Um, if this turns out to be too little or too much, it's easy enough to change in the design. But uh, put, put the holes that are oriented uh, closest to one end at the bottom. You put in your fill tube, but and this is cut to 20 inches long, it's just 3 quarter inch PVC. What I'm going to end up doing is putting a couple of uh, cross holes in here so that the, when it sits in the bottom of the bucket the water isn't closed off, it has some place to go. you use a potting mix and not garden soil. Garden soil holds a lot of water and it will uh, drown the plants. Uh, you need something that's going to drain freely and that's what a potting mix does. It's nice and loose. And I just want to pour some in here initially. What I want to do is press it down into that column and then the rest of it can be loose.
actually stole this to me out of my earth box over there. And the reason being is I didn't have a place to put it and I bought four of these. I have one in a in-ground garden over there that I'm getting rid of. And I have discovered in the past that I can have two huge tomato plants growing in one earth box, but a third one just wouldn't fit. They actually grow to about six foot tall and maybe three or four foot wide. And you have to have a lattice to support them. They absolutely get loaded with tomatoes. So I'm going to put this on the brick platform that I set up back here. It's just a uh, 20 inch paver from Home Depot. And the way that I irrigate all of this is rather than have to bring out a hose every day. I use this uh, Rainbird product. It's a quarter inch distribution tubing. This is a 250 foot roll. This is a, a cheaper way to buy it. Uh, I'll show you in a moment, but I actually have a 275 gallon IBC tote attached to my rain gutters and a 12 volt pump and a battery and a solar panel and a timer. So every morning uh, the sprinkler system kicks on, fills all of the buckets, all of the earth boxes, and uh, they drain when they're full and then the system shuts itself off. That way I'm not using city water and the plants really do like the rain water. So let me go get that plumbed up. And I'll just run this down inside the fill tube. And when it hits about the bottom, pull it up just a little bit and zip tie it to the chain link fence. Well, it can't blow out, but if I need to move the bucket, I can just lift the, the hose out and move it. And just string this along. bits and pieces in the description. This is a low pressure manifold. It's already got a regulator built into it. Sometimes these have to be cut off. Sometimes they'll just pull off. There we go. So the tubing, I'm just happen to use diagonal cutters, but you can use even scissors stuff cuts pretty easy and you simply slip it over the barb until it's seated and that's it that's all that's to it so you can see this one has got six ports they have other ones I think have uh, at least twice as many I've used up five so far I can always add another uh, riser with another one of these heads I don't know how much further down the row I'll go with buckets but uh, I'm planning on at least one more. Let me give you a quick show and tell of my irrigation system here. This is a 275 gallon IBC tote. They use these in the commercial worlds for uh, all kinds of liquids. It can be anything from hazardous chemicals to things like syrups and oils. Um, the place that I got it from, I paid next to nothing for it. I have seen these sell for uh, anywhere from $75 to $125. Those ones are generally already cleaned and didn't have anything toxic in them. You need to find that out before you start using that for water collection. So I have a adapter to take my four and a half inch downspout to a round piece of PVC. And down here it's got a drain. 
So inside that section up there, there's actually a float ball. And what happens is, this is called a first flush system. So when the rain first comes off the roof and washes all the dirt and garbage off, it goes down the pipe and continues to go down and out the drain. And when there's enough water in that column, the float goes up and chokes it off. And what happens then is all the water is then diverted into the barrel. In a good rainstorm, it doesn't take long for that column to fill up. And the drain hole in this thing is about the size of a pencil lead, so it's very tiny. So uh, not much is escaping out of here, but the system will automatically reset when it, it, uh, the rain stops. The water will stop flowing, and that column will drain until it's empty and ready to go for the next storm. And this pipe here is overflow, so when the tank is actually filled all the way up, it'll go through that PVC and out through the side. Now I've got pictures and a description on my website. There's actually a 12 volt RV pump in there, water pump. And I have a 12 volt water valve. That stops the system from siphoning through because you can get it to uh, siphon because the amount of water pressure that is in that tank pushing down on the pipe. Um, what I'll do is manually turn it on. You can hear the pump charging up. And once the water starts flowing, it goes through these PVC pipes. I have a riser there. I have another one there. And then it tees off and goes over to the earth boxes. Uh, I will probably end up putting uh, drippers on these rather than these uh, spray ones. It just happened to be what I had at the moment. So I have one, two, three, four, five pineapples growing here. Another couple here. This is where that extra tomato plant ended up. And it's doing okay. And around it are the extra onions that I had. And those are weeds. My banana trees were taking over, so I have chopped them all down. I have another pineapple growing here. And aloe. And I will eventually take all of these out and replant grass in here. Let's see how this is doing. And when that bucket fills up, the uh, wheat tubes on the other side will start to drain just like on the earth boxes. You can see when they get full, they start dumping water. That way it always controls the amount of water inside the box. The, the roots stop at the platform and then there's an air gap between the, the bottom of the roots and the water. And that's called air pruning. It'll stop the, the roots from going any further. Okay, there we go. That's exactly what we want. Just a gentle flow. Not enough to blow all the dirt out of the, the fill tube. I will give this a little bit of extra water only because all of this is dry right now and it'll take a while for the water to wick up. And that rainwater contains no chlorine obviously and doesn't burn the plants. Here 
southern Florida we have very few times that we don't have an abundance of rainwater. I also have another 65 gallon Fiskars rain barrel next to it. That's what I started with initially. That works well. It just doesn't hold enough for long periods of time. So I keep that as my backup. If the big barrel goes dry, I use that one for a while. And if that one goes dry, then I hook up the, the water hose to my irrigation well that I have. Uh, it's 20 foot in the ground. It's all fresh water. It has a fair amount of iron in it. And it smells of sulfur a little bit, but the plants don't mind. That's it. Easy.